now we have seen overall what are all the there are some industries some mechanisms some ways about the big data what are the typical use cases which industries are mostly using the big data what are the typical uh, for what uh, cases they are using now apart from this the, all the dimension of the big data and then the formats of the data that the data can come in these these, these formats actually before coming the big data there was uh, some conventional technology also that was available in the market to do this if I talk about say before 2006 when uh, this big data started evolution so so before the evolution of big data these are the technology that 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 was typically came into the picture they, that was typically available in the market so for all your structured data the, for the storage you you were having surely the RDMS that's that can be Oracle DB2 MySQL PostgreSQL any any of this and from this uh, the most popular is Oracle you surely know and for storage of your unstructured data surely you are using the OS file system you don't have any mechanism like um, currently we are having to do and for processing the same you are having SQL queries and the second to process the uh, this OS file system things we are having C C++ custom frameworks or um, uh, Python framework Python Perl to write your scripts so the application which I was talking about is was developed in Perl only that process the XML data and applies a number of business rules validation and uh, verification then after that conversion into a structured format now these all these technologies wa was quite good it was very effective till your data volume was small till your data volumes in say for example in MBs in GBs till 10, 50, 100 GBs, till 100 GB it was fine, but now the data volume is entered to terabytes, petabytes, even zettabytes also. So that's why big data technology came to the picture. Now there was why? Because conventional approaches or technologies are not able to solve the current problems. They are good for certain use cases, but they can't handle the data in the range of petabytes. Now these are the typical problems the conventional approaches were having limited storage capacity since your data is stored on a single machine you are having surely the limited storage capacity if you are storing your data say your data warehouse is Oracle okay you can only store up to some GBs of the data in the Oracle after that your system will break down if you store one terabyte of data into Oracle your system is gonna break down if you Talk about the processing capacity, it's again limited. Since it's working on a single machine, there is no scalability, there is an issue of single point of failure, there is an issue of sequential processing, if you are having multiple applications running together. Another big issue is RDMS can only handle unstructured data. Again, uh, let me discuss you. Uh, there is a one new term is called pre-processing of the data. That uh, you need to pre-process your data before storing it into RDMS. When I was working on the project of this XML parsing, we find find out that uh, these people uh, who have written this into earlier in in the stage or in the Perl script have are processing only structured data. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, processing this XML files and uh, they were capturing 67 record around, let's take a approximate, that is 60s records out of 90s. They find it quite useful, quite suitable and that, that's sufficient, more than sufficient for the later stage of, for uh, all their processing and all. But later stage of time, now currently, when analytics has reached to new heights, we currently require that 30 parameters more for our statistical and machine learning related things but since the data was already pre-processed and only processed the data was stored now we don't have any mechanism to get the data so currently a new term is introduced in the industry that is instead of ETL use ELTL let me again explain you ETL what do you do exactly? Extract 
transform load collect the data it's come under e then you transform you run your say for example if you are running your poly script then load into data warehouse this is this practice is now stopped now the next practice that started is e l t l first extract the data that is collect the data then after that load the data load the raw data then transform by using uh, any of the mechanism let me leave this load process data it, almost in all the industries currently what we want is storage of raw data because for later point of time because you you process your data according to your current requirements for the later point of time you might get new requirement for that you need only the raw data so that's why the, this particular structure this particular terminology has been changed to ELTL uh, I was giving you that particular use case if example means there we, we were skipping those 30 type of 30 fields from that now for our customer analytics especially for the customer analytics we need those 30 fields also and these 30 fields are very much important and very much required but we don't have any option we don't have any mechanism to use that what we can do we can't do anything for that so what's currently required is firstly store your data then after that process in tree if you go in RDBMS, you you might take a, a minute or more than that for getting the same. Now, we have seen overall what are all the, there are some industries, some mechanisms, some ways about the big data, what are the typical use cases, which industries are mostly using the big data, what are the typical, uh, for what uh, cases they are using. Now apart from this, the, all the dimension of the big data and then the formats of the data that the data can come in these, these, these formats. Actually before coming the big data, there was uh, some conventional technology also that was available in the market to do this. If I talk about say before 2006 when uh, these big data started evolution. So, so before the evolution of big data, these are the technology that, that, that was typically came into the picture. They, that were typically available in the market. So for all your structured data, the, for the storage, you you are having surely the RDBMS. That's that can be Oracle, DB2, MySQL, PostgreSQL, any any of this. And from this, uh, the most popular is Oracle. You surely know. And for storage of your unstructured data, surely you are using the OS file system. You don't have any mechanism like um, currently we are having Hadoop. And for processing the same, you are having SQL queries. And the second to process the uh, this OS file system things, we are having C, C++ custom frameworks or um, uh, Python framework, Python Perl to write your scripts. So the application which I was talking about is was developed in Perl only that process the XML data and applies a number of business rules, validation and uh, verification. Then after that conversion into a structured format. Now. These all these technologies were, was quite good. It was very effective till your data volume was small. Till your data volume in say for example in MBs in GBs till 10, 50, 100 GBs till 100 GB it was fine. But now the data volume is entered to terabytes, petabytes, even zettabytes also. So that's why big data technology came to the picture. Now there was why? Because conventional approaches or technologies are not able to solve the current problems. They are good for certain use cases, but they can't handle the data 
in the range of petabytes. Now, these are the typical problems the conventional approaches were having. Limited storage capacity. Since your data is stored on a single machine, you are having surely the limited storage capacity. If you are storing your data, say your data warehouse is Oracle. Okay. You can only store up to some GBs of the data in the Oracle. After that, your system will break down. If you store one terabyte of data into Oracle, your system is going to break down. If you talk about the processing capacity, it's again limited. Since it's working on a single machine, there is no scalability. There is an issue of single point of failure. There is an issue of sequential processing. If you are having multiple applications running together. Another big issue is RDMS can only handle unstructured data. Again, uh, let me discuss you. Uh, there is a one new term is called pre-processing of the data. That uh, you need to pre-process your data before storing it into RDMS. When I was working on the project of this XML parsing, we find out that uh, these people uh, who have written this into earlier in, in the stage or in the Perl script have are processing only structured data. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, processing this XML files and uh, they were capturing 67 records around. Let's take a proxy level, that is 60s records out of 90s. They find it quite useful, quite suitable, and that that's sufficient, more than sufficient for the later stage of, for uh, all their processing and all. But later stage of time, now currently, when analytics has reached to new heights, we currently require that 30 parameters more for our statistical and machine learning related things. But since the data was already pre-processed and only processed data was stored. Now we don't have any mechanism to get the data. So currently a new term is introduced in the industry that is instead of ETL use ELTL. Let me again explain you. ETL. What do you do exactly? Extract. Transform. load collect the data it's come under e then you transform you run your say for example if you are running your poly script then load into data warehouse this is this practice is now stopped Now the next practice that started is E L T L. First extract the data that is collect the data. Then after that load the data. Load the raw data. Then transform by using uh, any of the mechanism let me leave this load process data it, almost in all the industries currently what we want is storage of raw data because for later point of time because you you process your data according to your current requirements for the later point of time you might get new requirement for that you need only the raw data so that's why the, this particular structure, this particular terminology has been changed to ELTL. Uh, I was giving you that particular use case. If example, means there we, we were skipping those 30 type of 30 fields from that. Now for our customer analytics, especially for the customer analytics, we need those 30 fields also. And these 30 fields are very much important and very much required, but we don't have any option. We don't have any mechanism to use that. What we can do? We can't do anything for that. So what's currently required is firstly store your data. Then after that process your data. So that's why ELDL is used.
let's talk about the limited storage capacity so since your structured data since you are uh, I'm, I'm talking about the conventional technology is ELTL the approach used in big data instead of ETL uh, yes 